Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about one-sided limits and how they correspond to the two-sided limits that we have already seen. So first, let's actually get a definition for what a one-sided or left and right-hand limits are. So first we will define the left-hand limit. So in this case, we only need our function to be defined to the left of the point we care about. So here we care about the point C, and then we just need it to be defined on some interval uh, including points to the left of C. And then we say that the limit as X approaches C from the left of F of X is L. So that's how you would read this statement. If we can make F as close to L as possible, but by only choosing X close enough to C that are left of C. So for the right hand limit, it's very similar, but in this case, we want F to be defined to the right of C. And again, note that we don't actually require it to be defined at C, right? It's an open interval here, again, because we only care about near your point, but not at your point. Um, our notation in this case is a little plus that we're coming from the positive side, right? Like the minus was from the negative side. It's a good way to remember the notation. So we read this as the limit as X approaches C from the right of F of X is L. Again, if we can make F as close to L as possible by choosing X close enough to C, but to the right of C, or in this interval from C to B. So now let's look at an example to actually see this in action. All right, so here's a graph of a function f of x. Uh, you know, it looks like a piecewise kind of function here. And so we have these six one-sided limits that we're going to look at. So if you want, you can pause the video here for a second and try to figure them out yourself, and then I will go ahead and talk through them. All right, let's start by going left to right. So first we'll look at A here. And, you know, if we're looking at points coming from the left, right, so we're looking at things less than A, then we're really coming up along this line. And remember, we don't care about what happens at A. So the fact that we have a hole here, not a big deal. Clearly we are approaching negative 2. If we're coming in from the right, we're on this kind of parabolic part. And again, it doesn't matter that it is filled in there, but it's maybe nice to also see that, uh, but here we're approaching two. Uh, for B, we'll note that we actually have the point filled in at neither of those, but again, this point at B negative two doesn't really matter. If we're looking from the left, we're coming in and approaching two. If we're coming in from the right, then we are approaching three. And then lastly for C, uh, in this case, we're actually approaching the same thing from both sides, right? We're approaching two in both cases. So something you might be asking yourself is, what about two-sided limits, right? So on that previous picture, I mean, what about the limit as X approaches A, not from the right or left, but just the limit as X approaches A as we've seen before, or the limit as X approaches B, or the limit as X approaches C, right? Like how do we figure these out? Is there any connection between the one side and the two-sided limits? etc. So there is, um, and in fact, we define the two-sided limits in terms of the one-sided limits. So we're going to let f be defined on an interval containing the point c that we care about, and then we'd say the two-sided limit, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is l, if and only if the limit as x approaches c from the left is l, and the limit as x approaches c from the right is l. So basically both of the uh, one-sided limits have to exist and be the same thing, okay? So if you think back to our previous example, we now know what to look for uh, for the two-sided limits existing, right? So uh, in this first case here, right, so the limit as x approaches a, we see that the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit do not coincide, right? So in this case, the limit as x approaches a of f of x, we would write d and e for does not exist, right? It's not approaching one specific value because it's approaching a different value from each side. Uh, similarly, right, two is not equal to three, so the limit as x approaches b also does not exist. But for c, right, they're approaching the same point, and we can see that there's this just one value two that the function is approaching no matter which side I'm looking at. So in this case, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is two. 
So here's your first exercise. So I've given you the graph of g of x and the points a and b here. And so I want you to find these two one-sided limits and two two-sided limits for this function. So thus far, we've really only looked at things graphically in terms of the left and right-hand limits. Here, we're going to look at it more algebraically. So what if you're given a piecewise function defined formula-wise and not given the graph? Of course, you could graph this one, but we're going to look at how to solve the limits just from the formula, right? So uh, in this case, if you wanted to care about, say, the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, well, the only real point that's weird is the point where these are joined, right? So that would be at 0. So if you're talking about 2 and you think of things near 2, we're really only considering x squared. And so in this case, I mean, it's really going to be just the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared. We know that's a nice continuous function. We can just plug it in, and it's 4. We don't have to worry about the sided limits there because it's a nice parabola everywhere near 2. But if we start to ask questions about what's happening at 0, we're going to need to look at each side. So if I'm looking at the left, so this one would be looking at points less than 0, so I would be using the limit as x approaches 0 of x minus 2. And again, I'm not caring about the point at it, right? I don't care that it's 3 at 0. I only care about the points near it but left of 0. And x minus 2, that's just a nice line. I can plug it in. And so I get 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. Uh, if I'm looking at the right, then I'm going to care about x squared, right? And so here we get the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of x squared. Well, that's also just going to be something we can plug in, 0 squared. That's going to be 0. And so we end up concluding here, right, that these basically, these pieces don't meet up at 0. You're going to have a jump involved there. And so the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. Okay, and now to close, uh, we will have a second exercise. So here it's another piecewise defined function, g of x here. And I want you to find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, right, and the two-sided limit at 2 of g of x. And then the very last thing I want you to do is do the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x. All right, thank you for watching.